morning, church. As today is Father's Day, as we take communion, it seems appropriate that we reflect on the Father heart of God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Jesus is God's only Son, and yet He died a horrific death on the cross of Calvary. How could this be? Wouldn't God, a loving Father, save Him and prevent this from happening? The truth is that the reason Jesus came to earth as a man was to give His life as a sacrifice for our sins and therefore fulfil the old law. We are the whosoevers referred to in John 3, 16. Jesus' crucifixion, terrible and shocking as it was, was an act of love, the love of the Father and the love of Jesus Christ, His Son, who died for us. The pain was real, the suffering Jesus and no doubt the Father God also experienced was absolutely real. As Jesus died on the cross, He took our sins upon Himself so that we could be set free. As He died on that cross, He experienced separation from God, His Father, for the first time in His whole life. And this must have been absolutely excruciating from Him. He did this willingly to save us so that we can have eternal life. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we can together with Him become sons and heirs of God the Father. We are adopted into the, fa- into the family of God and we can cry out, Abba Father, which is a term which means daddy, a term of intimacy. Communion is an expression of this intimacy and fellowship with God as we remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. He set an example for us as how how we should live, a life of love and sacrifice, of forgiveness and kindness, faithfulness, patience and perseverance. Surely this is what Jesus means that when we take communion, He asks us to do this in remembrance of Him. So as we take the emblems, let us remember the love and sacrifice of Jesus Christ and also the love of our Heavenly Father. Please take the emblems. Lord, this day we just remember you and your love as our Heavenly Father. You never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, that you gave the ultimate price of Jesus Christ, your Son, to die for our sins. And Lord, we bless you and we bless the fathers that are here today. Ask you to be with them, give them strength for each new day. Lord, that your peace will be upon them, that your provision will be upon them as they provide for their families. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's, uh, let me just pray before I bring the word this morning. Father, already we sense and and hear you speaking. We hear your voice, Lord. We thank you for your blessing, Lord. We thank you for your love towards us, men, women, and children. Lord, the family of God, you put it all together. So, Lord, I, I also... Pray your blessing upon every family that's part of Seacoast Church, whether here this morning or not. Lord God, that you would bless each one where they are. Pour out your Spirit afresh upon us, Lord God. Pour out your Spirit upon the church. Raise up the church for this generation. Lord God, as we look to your your coming again, let there be a fire in our belly. Let there be a, a passion within us and compassion for others and a, and a hunger for the lost, Lord God, to come in. 
establish your church, Lord, according to your plans and purposes, the vision that you hold up before us. Father, I pray over um, our giving this morning. I pray that you would speak to each person's heart. Lord God, as we sow into your kingdom, as we sow our life and our finances to serve you, as Kathy said, you know, we've, we've, we're here to love and to give ourselves as a sacrifice to others. I pray, Lord, that there be an element of sacrifice in our giving today, that you would prompt our hearts because, Lord, we can never outgive you. You are our faithful provider who gives abundantly and wants to pour out such a blessing that it cannot be contained. Father, I pray over the Word of God. I pray over this Word as I bring it this morning, that You would bring it to life, that Your anointing would be upon it, Lord God. Touch each of our hearts, Lord, with Your Word. Let it be established too, in Jesus' Name. Amen. Well, it's great to see you here this morning and um, on Father's Day. Um, I've got a, a message for the fathers, but I've, I've just got a message, particularly for the men. But ladies, you can, you can have it as well. Um, when, I was a, when I was only a, a little kid, my father would, uh, would wrestle me on the lounge room floor. And it's, it sounds like fun, doesn't it? And, uh, you know, a great dad bonding moment. <clears throat> But his idea of wrestling me was to pin me down so hard I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> he was a strong, fit young man. He used to play footy, worked physically hard in, in every job that he had. And strength was what he used to get on in life, um, you know, to make something of himself, and which he did. And uh, I have a lot of respect for my father in so many ways. But I think he forgot for a moment, as he tackled me to the floor, that I was only this eight, nine, ten-year-old little kid. And um, I, I would just yell at him and usually end up in tears, and he had no idea how to deal with that. And, um, you know, I think I, I had been scarred for life. And uh, Vanice thinks it's hilarious. <clears throat> and I only bring up that traumatic memory this morning, actually, it's not that traumatic and I have got over it. And um, I also laugh at it too now, as you can see. But I bring it up because I really believe that strength, including physical strength, is something that men particularly are designed and created to use for good. The Bible speaks about mighty men of valour, strong men, courageous men. Men are, men are built differently to women. Have you noticed? Not everybody does seem to understand and notice that difference these days, but men are different to women. This morning, I want to talk about what it means for Christian men to be strong. I identify as a Christian man. I know who I am in Christ. There are people who identify as all kinds of things and are only too proud to make a huge noise about it. Well, I want to make a bit of a noise this morning and celebrate what it means to be a man of God. A man who lives for Jesus. A man who desires to be strong in the Lord. As I think about my own dad on this Father's Day, I realise that there was something that I don't remember seeing too much of in his relationship with me. It's something that I, th I really believe should always accompany strength in a man. And in fact, it's a vital aspect of strength that turns simply strong men into world changers. But first, let me tell you a bit about David in the Bible. In Psalm 18, David says, I can run against a troop. I can leap over a wall. God has armed me with strength. He has made my feet like the feet of a deer, 
God has given me arms that can bend a bow of bronze. There's no question that David was physically strong. He killed lions and bears with his hands. He knocked out the Philistine giant Goliath, hit him right between the eyes. He was, he was a skillful warrior. And then he took Goliath's huge and heavy sword and cut off his head. Soon after, David was anointed by Samuel to be the next king of Israel. As he, and, um, as he, and he was summoned then, soon after, to, to King Saul, uh, who was struggling with a distressing spirit. Now Saul was desperate for someone to, clum, to come in and to, to play some soothing music uh, because of this distressing spirit that he had. And in 1 Samuel 16, 18, it says, Then one of the servants of Saul answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valour, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. So from the beginning, David is recognised as this strong and mighty man and a man of war. But we also know that David was a psalmist, which is why Saul called for him in the first place. And here is the thing. David was a man of strength, but he had other qualities that complemented and added and undergirded, really, his strength. In fact, at the end of David's life, Samuel, the prophet, shares David's last words. Uh, and you can read that for yourself in 2 Samuel 23. But the point I want to make um, is that Samuel introduced these words of David's by saying this. So 2 Samuel 23.1, it says, Now these are the last words of David. Thus says David, the son of Jesse, Thus says the man raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. Now I want to speak out this morning and hopefully these words will be heard beyond these four walls, this building, that being a strong man is not all about physical strength and natural ability. It's not all about being able to fight physical battles and to use your physical strength to accomplish what you want. David was one of the strongest men in Israel, but he was also described as being the sweet psalmist of Israel. Now, I'm not saying necessarily, necessarily that sweetness and psalming uh, should go alongside strength for all of us men. Um, I think some men are very strong in, you know, in, in, in singing and, and you know, in worshipping and, and psalming. Um, but, you know, that's not necessarily for all of us. But there is something that is for all of us. Coming back to Psalm 18, David says, in the midst of talking about his ability and his strength to do incredible, you know, feats, as, as I described before, it says in Psalm 18, 1 to 2, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Then down in verse 32, it is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. And then in 35, you have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. David knew his strength. He knew he could accomplish mighty acts of valour. But do you know what David himself said made him great? God's gentleness has made him great. And if you look back to, if I look back to my relationship with my own dad, I could tell you a hundred things that I loved, loved him for and that I respected him for. His strength was clear and honourable but I don't remember so much the gentleness. And I definitely didn't see the gentleness of God. He had never experienced that from his own father. His mother died when he was in his teens. So he didn't even know how to show gentleness to his son. But it opens up the way for me to say this this morning, that strength is a lot more than physical ability, determination, striving to win 
and striving to be successful. True strength comes from God. And true godly strength sits right alongside gentleness. In Galatians um, 5, we have the fruit of the Spirit. In verses 22 to 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And I love it that it says, against such there is no law. Because when we are truly led by the Spirit, exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit, and it doesn't come from doing things out of duty, but displaying these qualities of our life because they, they naturally flow out of who we are, then we are fully living in the grace that comes from God. The grace that has saved us, not the law, not the rules, or the religious requirements of the Old Testament. Do you remember uh, last week I shared with you uh, about the sheep and how the sheep would hear the voice of the shepherd? And in the Middle East, just for those who weren't here, just very briefly, in the Middle East, all the flocks of, um, the local flocks of sheep, some small, some larger, they would all be put into the same village sheepfold at night. And... Um, and in the, in the morning when the sheep would hear the footsteps of their shepherd, some of them would know the footsteps of their own shepherd. Or they would hear the voice, his voice, calling them all by name. They would, weave, they would then weave their way through all the other sheep and come out to follow their own shepherd. I just think that's remarkable. And it's a beautiful illustration of how personal we are to God. And how we are also able to discern and to respond to the voice of God and to follow Him into the places that He has prepared for us. And the Bible also calls these places, if you remember, places that He has discovered for us. I love that. There's a real sense of adventure and, you know, spontaneity or, you know, just um, God just going into places that are, that are new and fresh. He discovers places for us and He leads us into those places. Well, I bring that up again this morning because I want to share with you two verses from Isaiah. And uh, this is from the Passion Translation. But in two verses, right next to each other, we see the strength, the power and the might of God accompanied by the gentleness, love and compassion of God. They always go hand in hand. In Psalm 40 verses 10 to 11, it says, Look, here comes Lord Yahweh, as a victorious warrior, he triumphs with his awesome power. Watch as he brings with him his reward and the spoils of victory to give to his people. So here we have this mighty man of valour, this victorious warrior, bringing back the spoils that, that he has taken from the enemy to give to his people. And in the very next verse, it says this, He will care for you as a shepherd tends his flock gathering the weak lambs and, and taking them in, in his arms. He carries them close to his heart and gently leads them or leads those who have young. What a contrast, well, it is like a contrast in the heart of God. And I loved um, what Megan said earlier on, you know, about God, um, wanting, I don't know, I can't remember what the words were now, but it was like God just reaching out to us as, as a loving father and wanting to hold us and, and, and lead us. So one verse is about this victorious warrior, as I said, but the next one, we're, we're held close to, to God's heart. You see, gentleness, gentleness is not weakness. We'll talk about what it is to feel weak in a moment, but gentleness is not weakness. Gentleness is not the absence of strength, but it is strength under control. It is strength that is measured. Gentleness is powerful. David, as a shepherd, used his strength to kill lions and bears, but it was only to protect the sheep that he was looking after. You know, he, he, could, kill, he, was, he could be a lion killer and a sweet psalmist singing in the field and at the same time be this protector of the sheep that goes out and destroys the enemy. He only took off Goliath's head because of the indignation and the offence that he felt 
you know, this giant had, that, that, that this giant had the audacity to come against the armies of the living God. It's not like David was just looking for a fight, any place he could find it. There, were, there was a deep-seated heart motivation when he had to rise up into those places. And isn't that, the, isn't that the kind of shepherd, the kind of leader, the kind of, you know, protector and advocate that, that we would all want? You know, I, I just thought, where are the leaders, the godly kings of this nation that have the strength to stand up to ungodly, evil, confusing narratives that are being pushed down our throats right now? Where are those godly leaders? Strong men and women, not just men, men and women leaders who have both strength and gentleness, wisdom, but boldness to lead this nation with wholehearted passion. That's what we need to be praying for. When Paul encourages the churches in his letters, he writes to his young men, the young men that he's mentoring, and he says things like this. To the church in Philippi, he says, in Philippians 4, 5, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And Paul says then to Timothy, young Timothy, as he, he recognises that where Timothy is, where he's located, there are so many temptations. There's evil and destruction. And that Timothy is surrounded by all this. And he says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, 11, but you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, Love, patience, and gentleness. Gentleness is always in there. If it's good enough advice for Timothy as he builds and pastors the church in the first century, then it's good enough for the men of the 21st century. There's another strong man of God I want to specifically mention this morning. Um, you would remember that uh, Joshua and Caleb they were two of the spies that were sent into the promised land to check out the land and, you know, to see what this land of, that God was giving to his people, what it was like. And, um, of course, only, only these two men of courage and vision and faith came back with a good testimony. Um, yes, in, and they admitted, yes, there are challenges before us. We will, we will need to fight some battles and, and overcome some adversity. But that's God's promise to us. This is God's promise. This is the land He has given us. And, um, you know, let's go at once and possess the land. But of course, the people listened to all the negativity um, of, of, of the other spies and they refused to go up into the land of promise. And it cost them their lives. As they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years, all of that generation died without seeing the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. 45 years later, a new generation enters the land of promise and Caleb is finally able to possess his inheritance. And, you know, men, this is a strong man. Doesn't matter what age, doesn't matter about age. Strength isn't related to age. Not the strength I'm talking about this morning. Joshua 14, I want to read this. It's a bit of a few verses here, but Joshua 14, 7 to 12. Caleb says, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I, I brought back word to him uh, as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up there with me uh, made the heart of the people melt. And I wholly, uh, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day saying, surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive and he said, these 45 years later, so he's 85 years old. Is that right? Or older? Anyway, yes, 85 years old. And um, ever since the Lord spoke to me, spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. I love um, that song, Meg, I keep 
referring back to that song this morning. It was just beautiful, but God is with you. I, I, I felt that was a word for us men this morning. He's with you. Wherever you think you are or whatever you're going through, God is with you. Um, I thought that was such a powerful word. Um, now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you, you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. There's strength in this man. There is conviction of heart. There is a, a holding on to the promises of God. Caleb knew his strength was in God. He had faith, he had vision, he had strength to carry God's promises all of those years. There was something very different about Caleb. God himself said this of Caleb in Numbers 14, 24. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me firmly, uh, fully, I will, bring into the, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Caleb had a different spirit. He had courage. He faced adversity head on. He stood up for what he believed. He stood for all that God said and promised. He had a strong spirit. He was a man of strong character. His life wasn't determined by what others thought of him. He lived by God's word. Even while being forced to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, he remained faithful to God's vision for his life. He remained steadfast. He never blamed God. He just kept trusting that that day would come. Caleb never compromised on what God said to him. He always remained eager to fulfil his calling and he remained a man of faith. Even, those, even in those trying circumstances in desert life, he had a strong spirit. Men, we are called to have a different spirit to the world that we live in. We're called to be strong and of good courage. Men of godly character, faithful, steadfast, trusting God, uncompromising, full of faith and all with a spirit of gentleness. Finally, and of course, most importantly of all, and I'll close with this, we have the life of Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. If you are feeling burdened, if you are feeling weak within yourself, then Jesus says that this, his yoke, his burden is light, and his gentleness will bring you rest. He also says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. There are times when we feel weak from sickness, tiredness, the demands of life, circumstances that may seem insurmountable. But Jesus has an exchange for us. He exchanges His strength for our weakness. He exchanges our heavy burdens with His gentleness and His own humble heart. And it's the, in the name of Jesus and the power of His shed blood for us that we can fight against the things that want to bring us down. We mightn't be involved in physical battles. Thank God, thank God we aren't living in places in Europe right now. But we are in a spiritual battle. Christian men and women are in a fight for righteousness, for godliness, for the Word of God to be the standard of truth that it has been for centuries. We need physical strength for life, but we also need spiritual weapons to fight the good fight of faith. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And it goes on to describe the armour and the weapons that we need for our spiritual warfare. We don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, darkness and in spiritual places. And we fight that, we come against that with truth with righteousness, with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, continuing steadfastly in prayer, perseverance, boldness to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, Christ and the price He paid with His own blood. These are our weapons. 
And men, I have always said, when we find our true place of strength in God and in His Word, then the women will be secure in their place in the body of Christ. The challenge is for us to walk in strength, balanced with gentleness, with trusting God, displaying all the fruit of the Spirit and fighting the enemy with the most powerful weapons, the Word of God, the Name of Jesus, the power in the blood and also the testimony, our own testimony of His goodness towards us. Be strong as you can physically, can be physically. Be strong as you can be emotionally. But above all of that, be strong spiritually. Your family, our church, your community, and even this nation is depending on you. You can be a world changer. Amen. Father, as men particularly this morning, we come before Your throne of grace, recognising that we're only here because of You, Lord Jesus. You led us. You led us from the sheepfold and You led us into places of discovery and places of, that are safe, places that where, where, we, belong, where we belong, places that, where we can fulfil the calling upon our lives. Lord, you've called us to be strong, strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And I pray, Father, that you would teach us and reveal to us what true godly strength really is. That in our strength, we can also be gentle. In our strength, we can also Minister your grace and your mercy, your love, your kindness, your goodness. I pray for every man in this place this morning and for the women too. That you would give us that strength and gentleness together. That we would carry a different spirit within us. Not a spirit that reacts in anger, or reacts in frustration, lashes out, but a spirit that carries wisdom and boldness, a spirit, well, oh God, where we can walk through life's journey, being ambassadors for You, Lord Jesus. You taught us You did teach us how to live our lives, how to be in this world. Not succumbing to the temptations and the things around us, but to be victorious, victorious warriors, strong warriors, men of valour. So Lord, I thank You. Thank You, Lord, that You would lead us forward that we would be together the church of Jesus Christ that fully reveals your heart, the Father's heart in every way. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's stand as we worship.